Peter Omani has not been picked. Andy Farrell has gone for some more bulk, but will it be enough to turn things around this weekend against South Africa? Hello amateurs, welcome back to the Summer Series, here with you throughout the summer and beyond, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, what of this game? South Africa will want to absolutely batter Ireland this week, there is no question about that. They got a load of walking wounded in the Irish camp and South Africa are going to want to ram home that advantage. So what happened last week? I mean, South Africa showed a lot, some differences to their game. They showed the ability to go wide, particularly early when Ireland were really compressed and, and maybe sleeping a, a little bit to that as a threat. And it got them on the board very quickly. What else did South Africa show? Something that we know they can do all the time and that is brutal absolutely brutal defense they were very very strong especially close to their own line and they needed to be because Ireland did spend a lot of time in the South African 22 but they got battered they got battered backwards and the more they played there the harder it got for them Ireland started slow as well they were just off it they weren't quite off the line making shots they weren't quite sharp enough on attack Hard to put a finger on that, really, when they've been looking forward to this game for so long. But they were just off it an ounce. But they were very inventive. That try for Conor Murray towards the end of the game came off a brilliant bit of inventive play amongst the front row forwards. I made a short about that this week, which has gone kind of viral, actually. So go and check that out if you haven't already. Uh, it just goes into detail about what they did and why and how it worked. OK, then, into the selections. We start with South Africa and if it worked last week and there's no injuries, just do it again. They have picked exactly the same 23 and there is absolutely no reason for them not to do that. Um, this is a very strong looking Springbok side. I know they are, do have a couple of injuries around and about, but if you look at that team, particularly 1-15, to 15, then it is World Cup winning bulk, strength, experience. I think actually this is the most experienced Springbok 23 of all time that's going to take the field this weekend. So it's just rammed full of class and experience. Uh, yeah, they're going to be very hard to beat, especially at home. Onto the Ireland team. And they, uh, yeah, like I said in the intro, a lot of walking wounded and some not even walking. Dan Sheehan out with a cruciate ligament injury. Craig Casey out with a, a bad concussion suffered last week, which is a, a, even more of a shame because I really thought he came of age last week as a test rugby player. I've always had my doubts about him a little bit before, just quite, couldn't quite step up to the plate. But I thought on Saturday, just gone, he was outstanding. Also, injury worries during the week for Porter, Henshaw, Osborne, Aki. And amazingly, Aki's the only one that didn't make it. He was carrying his shoulder in the later half of that game last week and it was it was well he did incredibly well to stay on as long as he did but the rest are back so looking at the forwards Porter Kelleher Furlong McCarthy and here's the change Ryan in for Peter O'Mahony with Ty Byrne moving to the number six jersey as I said I just think they want more bulk I think looking at O'Malley's performance last week, he tipped the ball on every time he got in possession of it for the first 35 minutes. And the first time he carried it, he got smashed back by Andre Pollard. So I just wonder if he's the physical presence he needs to be at the moment to take on these spring box and whether, yeah, it's, it's a physicality decision, I believe. Because otherwise, of course, um, you could have gone for Ryan Baird in the sixth journey, which jersey, which a lot of people have been calling for for a long time now. But again, he's more of an open field, more of a sprinter, more of a runner. He's not afraid of the physicality whatsoever, but he's not going to bash you over the gain line uh, like Ryan might well have to do. And I just wonder if this maybe is the end for Peter Romani. Super experienced, but getting on now in years. Hasn't been given an Irish contract, I don't believe, for next season. But playing on with Munster, could this be it for Peter Omani uh, in an Irish jersey? Time will tell. I called Danny Kerr's retirement far too early and he went on to make an, <laughs> make it over 100 caps. So don't read anything into this, Peter, if you're watching, which I'm sure you're not. So into the backs. And this is another big problem for Ireland, I think. They're probably going to have to slightly change the way they play with Murray just... 
He doesn't get around the park. He doesn't keep the momentum in, in play as well as Casey, as well as Jamison Gibson Park. So they may have to be a bit more direct. They may have to just play a bit more territory. The sort of they haven't been great attack this year anyway, but they might have to just go away from their sort of free flowing play, which they like to do. On the left wing, James Lowe, so influential. I, I mean, I can't remember a single player having so inf- many influential moments for his team and the opposition as he did last week. He'll be looking to cut out those errors and just do the good stuff, which we all know he's absolutely capable of. And onto the bench comes oh, Peter Romani and Stuart McCloskey and, and Blade, uh, the scrum half replacement, along with Rob Herring. At hooker, so it's a lot of changes for Ireland this week. Could be very difficult for them. They need to probably simplify their game plan a little bit, as I sort of mentioned a minute ago, and and see where that gets them. They were so, so dogged last week, even though they were probably not the better side for the majority of the game. And in the end, it was only one score. And there were so many tight decisions that could have gone either way. However, it's going to be difficult for them. But it's the last game of their season. Can they get up for this one again? Can they stick in this fight and maybe nick it at the end? If they do win it, that's the way I'll see they'll do it. For South Africa, they've taken the talk of Ireland potentially being the best team in the world really personally. And they are determined to show that that's not the case here. Another factor for South Africa is this is their first home test post-World Cup. And when they won the Cup World Cup in 2019... Covid happened straight afterwards, so they never got that big sort of homecoming tour, which just makes it even more important for them to perform during these test matches as well. I think South Africa are going to dominate this game more than they did last week, and I think they're going to get the points on the board to reflect that. If Ireland can win, it would be a monumental effort. I just can't see it. I think South Africa by a couple of scores in the end. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.